I was um, given this. Well, I wasn't given it, but uh, I was. I exchanged the labor on this, sorted out for a uh, for a shoe maker's anvil, which maybe I can show you later. Anyway, I'm not a hundred percent sure what this does. Obviously, it's an industrial sewing machine of some description made by Mero Machine Company, Hatford, Connecticut, USA. Patent in the United States, patented and foreign countries. Right, so this is the style 6ABB. So what we're going to do is um, take it apart and have a look see at, as the Irish would say, what the crack is with it. Um, it's pretty seized, it's not moving, so it's going to be a bit of a labor of love, as most of the things are that I get involved with, just in case we can't see what we're doing. Okay. So we'll take it from there. Today is our start date is the 4th of November 2020. Um, I am in the county of Devon in the city of Plymouth in the United Kingdom or better known as England. This gives us some idea of the age of this. Incredibly, it's all completely intact. Even the, the little over center. Um, I think the filler is, I'm not going to touch it because it'll it'll fall apart and unfortunately but I think that might be beyond saving but what this does tell us they wouldn't normally bother on on a sewing machine with something like this if this wasn't a fairly high speed um, so I'm kind of guessing that this thing originally was not uh, treadle driven. That is also indicated by the diameter here being as small as it is. So I have a feeling it was driven, might not have been electrically, it might have been via, via overhead belt system or something, but I think this was a production piece. There's a few eyelets here from where the um, from where the thread came into this machine, and you have a whole series of. Um, what were probably pegs for where the um, the bobbins went. And judging by the the um, tension setting on here, it looks as though it is a single 
Apple's red machine and down here and I'm hoping that the bobbin is still in there but that might be that's pretty seized no 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 there we go it is opening and it's I'm not forcing it oh no there is no bobbin doesn't look like it but it has there is a shear here which tells me that this could well have had some sort of uh, a cutting action like a modern day overlocking machine this might be the great grandfather of that because looking at these um, guides here there might well be uh, some turning over the device here to create a, a seam and to overlock it and an overlocker modern day overlockers have two or three threads so I'm not sure we'll work it out as we go along and that's why I want to run the video so that we've got loads of evidence of uh, what's going on hopefully now we can see over here there are varying um, lifters here you probably can't see them there because I can't move the machine you can't uh, these are typical in sewing machines is uh, to lift or loop the thread and here is your take up which is in the lower position and I'll put it there you can see it there and that will is what takes up the on a normal sewing machine it pulls up your stitch because this is jammed you can't move this at the moment all right so it is fairly complex i'm gonna have to offer it up a few different ways just to get a bit of a record of it and very carefully take this apart so you can see we have we have some other oddities up here this is spring loaded so that obviously moved so there we go we'll leave it at that For one moment I thought that was a little piece of original lint. Mm, could be. Not, we wouldn't be surprised if we find uh, some lint in this machine. cover off two screws there and do things unnecessarily
Yeah, they always the unfortunate thing about something like this is the likelihood of me finding a drawing where it is extremely remote. And uh, judging by some of these holes here, it looks as though, and for obvious reasons, this thing is old. It's at least a turn of the last century, so I would put it. At Judging by the number of shoe machines that I've worked with in my time in the shoe industry, um, this is at least a hundred years old. So I can't imagine we're going to find um, too many of them around. As I thought, that just loosened something behind it. You can see those. So there's something attached to this. This is not necessarily a cover. Now, I've worked on many modern. machines and they are invariably assembled in unique ways Fortunately, that's three eighths, uh, eight millimeter fix fits it. recording what I'm doing. The condition of the spring is quite extraordinary when you think about it.
is screwed into the casting or into this plate. And it is screwed into the casting, so. Yeah, it's just a great pity that this some point was left was left outside. And that uh, has um, rusted it. Let's have a look. Let's see if this comes out. Okay, 20. Almost. No point in me giving a shout out for that because Q20 is not really available in this country, but it's WD40, it's the same stuff. It's just a different make. Looks as though it, d it does have more than one thread, but you see there is another, there's another take up there, so it definitely, that seam has dual threads, because here is another eye in it, this is, I'm not sure whether this is for bobbin winding, or whether this, maybe it doesn't use a bobbin at all, because Obviously, if it's got dual thread, it doesn't need a bobbin. And that's possibly... Um, what the story is. Okay, I'm just going to put this here. Get this stuff all over the place. So, I don't have a fancy high frequency cleaner or anything like that, so I have to do this the old way, the slow way, take it apart. And just clean up the way we we did it years ago. I've never worked anywhere in my 47 years of useful employment. We never owned a high frequency cleaner. Everything was just cleaned by hand using the slowly but surely method. That is, so it's not looking too bad, so it might, might come around. Pair of water pump pliers. Just 
very gently and see if I can persuade that to loosen up. And we can take this off. A, a grip screw. It is a grip screw. So put so you can see what I'm doing. There's a grip screw in here that holding this boss in place. <coughs> Let's go down a little bit. Do it. We don't have enough oomph on that. Give me another one. Bush. Okay. Bush. It's purely as a spacer. You didn't have to make the shaft from just your stock shaft. Looks like about a quarter inch. Where is this? Six comma three. That's quarter inch. Okay. Now I want to get this out, but I do not want to score it. So let me use a little bit of water paper. A few times. It's very fine water papers. Seven thousand or something. So it's not going to do any harm. flex on that um, on the journal which means that the, the journals are free yes. this is a good sign really <laughs> 